right guys welcome back um i'm gonna give this new camera a try i got a new camera i don't know how well it's gonna work how well the audio is gonna sound stuff like that so this video is probably gonna be kind of a trial and error um right now i just have the camera raw there's no shotgun microphone or anything like that so we'll do a little bit of work here on the square body or on the c20 i mean um and it just in its raw form i'll put the microphone on for the second half of the video then you guys can tell me which uh which setup you like best i don't know how well i'm gonna like this because i can't i can't zoom in um i can take way better video but i just can't zoom in i don't know how to zoom in or if i'm gonna be able to so um but anyways what we're doing today on the c20 is i got a new carburetor i just said the heck with it and i went and we got a new carb here so um it is a 1906 metal rock abs2 it's a um same thing as what's here except for the electric choke version same thing as what i got on the brown truck um i'm gonna go through this thing and i'm gonna double check i'm gonna check one of the one of the spots by the electric choke um usually isn't plugged from the factory from Edelbrock it's really weird it's a vacuum leak type thing but I find this very interesting though this came with the new carburetor hmm uh, fuel filter supplied by Edelbrock that's interesting not like we're not having dirty fuel issues so um, that's kind of interesting but we'll get this carburetor off here I'll put a new hose in here to put this back together and then I can run that to the back like normal. So we'll get that other carburetor on here and we'll be, probably be able to test it out. Once we get the new carburetor on here, we're gonna throw the hood on. I gotta put the seat away in storage and then we'll be able to take it for a test drive. As far as the brake issue, I'm gonna worry about that at a later date. It's still drivable. So let's unbox this carburetor, see uh, see what's going on by that electric choke if it's like the other carburetors I got or or not you can see it but if you look in there there's like a little screen and usually what we've been finding is that when you start these uh, carburetors up there's a lot of vacuum leaking from here and you plug it and it changes the changes the idle and changes the sound it's definitely a big vacuum leak so I'm kind of curious to see what that's all about but uh, I mean looks good uh, functioning good so that's good
All right, guys, so I got the carburetor on. I'm just kind of thinking about a jig for the uh, kick down cable here. I got to come up with a little jig so it um, attaches. Otherwise, if you um, put the kick down cable, attach kick down cable to a stock carburetor linkage here, it hits on the, it hits on the idle screw right there and gives it a false pull. So um, I got to think of, think of a little rig, but um, I am actually using the mic shotgun microphone now, so if you hear a difference in audio, that's why. Um, tell me, you guys can tell me if you like this better or you like the other style better. Um, I know this is going to be better for like in cab and windy areas because it's got a little foam piece on it, so no wind um, interrupts me. But um, I think that's about. All I gotta say about the camera, and now I'm gonna come up with a jig for that kick down cable, and then we should be able to get the hood on. And well, first we'll fire it up, but and tune in the carb, but then after that, we'll get the hood on and be able to take it for a quick test ride. So I'm getting pretty excited. Stay tuned. We're gonna take this thing for a test ride, and if we have some time, we gotta move the LS truck, put it on the lift. I'm probably gonna put it on the lift here, and once I get it on the lift here, we'll get it lifted up and kind of talk about it if I get that far today so let's get this puppy done and test it out all right so I come up with a little jig for the uh, kick down cable here it works perfect it holds the accelerator spring return spring too um, I'm just gonna hook up the choke here I don't know where the choke needs to be set I don't know where all that's gonna have to be set yet because brand new carburetor. I'm gonna get my screwdrivers out here for the idle mixture screws and the um, idle itself. Other than that, I might get the choke screw, uh, choke um, size too, but it's really kind of warm in here, so I'm probably gonna have to wait till a cold day and go out there, start it up. And if it doesn't run, adjust it till it starts, and then the next day and the next day, you know, so on and so forth. So for now, I just gotta get a little pin for my accelerator cable and then we can turn this thing over get some fuel in there and get it started up and do some carburetor adjusting for now I, I think I'm gonna leave the mic on so I can see how the rest of the video does with the mic I'll probably put the camera by the exhaust and fire it up and see how that does so other than that enough with the camera nonsense let's get this thing figured out and fire it up she sat for a little bit but I don't know how well you can hear this but listen to this so that's definitely a big vacuum leak so I'm gonna have to do like I did on one of my other ABS2 carburetors and find a plug for that so I'm going to find a plug for that so I can properly dial in the carburetor and then we should be able to put the hood on and go for a ride after that. Alright, in case you guys were wondering, this is what I found I'm going to plug it with. This is a RTV nozzle cap, uh, silicone cap or whatever you want to call it. You got two notches here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it right at this notch and I'm going to lightly tap it in there with my pliers or a hammer and that's going to solve it. Um, I did this on one other carburetor. A fancier way of doing it so you can ensure it's okay I have taken a quarter inch brake line and ground it down around the edges tapped it in there very carefully and then put a rubber plug over it so um, but this works too this is just a quick and easy way to do it so you can you know make sure everything's tuned up and ready to go they stay in and I haven't had an issue so I'm gonna do that and get this thing put on there 
One thing I wanted to add, um, after I put that little plug in there, when I made my idle mixture screw adjustments, it, um, you could actually make an adjustment because when you turn them all the way in, the motor would get really lean. And turn them all, you can, you can hear where you're at. Um, usually for those, I like to go a turn and a half. So you go in, let me shut this off so I can explain this to you guys. A very, very good information. I just want to uh, make sure you guys can hear it properly. So for example, I'll take this carburetor right here. All right. So say you want to make your idle, idle mixture screw adjustment, right? If I can get this in here today. So you want to make your idle mixture screw adjustment. So you're taking, if my screwdriver could stay in, the, stay in the slot. You go in. Now you got to be very careful. I'm turning this lightly. You go in until it stops. Now I, I don't mean like tighten it. I just kind of, I just kind of like, you know, just kind of like turn on it lightly until it, it stops with, with friction. And then you go a turn and a half out is usually a good baseline to work, work with. So half, turn, another half. That's a turn and a half. And I do that for both screws because this screw right here, now this is a really good way to look at it. This screw right here controls this half of the carburetor. This screw right here controls this half of the carburetor in the idle circuit, in the idle circuit. So that will um, give you a good baseline. Out of the box, I don't even know what they come from, come with or, or whatever, but um, as far as the accelerator pump, the middle hole is the even amount of fuel. The bottom hole is the least amount of fuel, and the top hole gives you the most amount of fuel when you mash the pedal. So I got mine in the middle one for now. I'll see how it does. This thing is going to be driven kind of year-round, so I'll have to see how that does. But uh, other than that, you could actually hear an idle idle mixture adjustment when I put that plug in there so that makes a big difference when it comes to tuning a carburetor so I'm going to ask for pops to help me put the hood on once we get the hood on I'll uh, let this thing down actually I'll let this thing down and back it up a little bit so it's easier to put the hood on and then I will take this thing outside and we can take it for a quick spin see how it does and I'm hoping I'm hoping this thing uh, does okay and it'll be a good runner for now until I can get the other motor rebuilt, but other than that, I'm gonna get this thing off so we can get the hood on. Other than that, it's a pretty good runner. I'll uh, show you, walk around the truck one more time, 
and then later we'll get the LS truck up in the air and uh, we'll talk about that one. I can tell you already I'm going to have to readjust the idle but Alright guys, I got the uh, C10 up on the lift here, I uh, got my little workspace cleaned off. Um, I think the next investment for the shop is going to be one of those lights that you can stretch and they hook on here and here and it's a big LED bar shining down because uh, it's definitely, you know, definitely not the brightest in there. Um, as far as this thing goes. I know a lot of you guys probably still aren't watching. You want to see me test drive the C20 and then you're gone. So um, if you are still watching and you're curious about the LS truck, this thing is going to be getting a Texas Speed a V4 Torker cam, which I have right here. Yes, it's a Summit box, but if you bear with me here to get it open, I can show you, show you what we're working with here. Stand it up on end. So there's a Texas Speed logo. Texas Speed V4 Torker. Let's see if I can get you guys a duration here. Okay, you can't quite see it, but it says 231, 234 duration, uh, 629 lift at 615 lift, 111 lobe separation angle. So um, it's a pretty big cam. I can if I can pull a plastic down here without making this look too too bad it's got some nasty lobes on it so there's some pretty nasty lobes so it's definitely gonna chop pretty hard but uh i have to do in order to make this cam work i have to do valve springs and obviously the cam but i need a stall converter so i have one here it's a 3500 stall from Jegs. It was formerly in a, another truck. Um, and then I have this bad boy. Two wheel drive turbo 400. I might have to change the drive shaft up a little bit, but I don't even know if I'm gonna really do anything to this thing other than put it in, put the stall in. Um, if something happens to it, it's not that hard to pull a transmission compared to a motor. So I'm gonna do it in house. I'm not gonna take anything off. Or I'm not going to take the motor out, I mean, but uh, another thing I want to do is an intake. If I can get my hands on the new Holly split design intake for the Cathedral Port big single plane, that's going to be the way to go. I would like to go with the Super Vic from Edelbrock, but that's so hard to come by, it's not even funny. So it is what it is, but I'll pull the radiator out of my way and maybe even the grill because I'll be pulling the camshaft out the front. But, um, as far as the cut and dry list that this thing is getting, it's getting a cam, valve springs, torque converter, transmission, turbo 400 transmission, whatever I gotta do with drive shaft, and then the exhaust. I'm gonna get this thing lifted up in the air and I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do with the exhaust. You're gonna like this one. Alrighty, alrighty. so underneath the truck here, um, this exhaust I bought used, and it's leaking. We got a cracked muffler, cracked muffler everywhere. It's going, she's coming out. We're going to be doing a, I'm looking at it now, it might be a little more difficult than I thought. We're gonna be doing a header dump. So I'm gonna have to move the lift arms, but I wanna come off the header. And before I get to this cross member right here and have to go around it, I wanna, I want it to turn. I want it to turn and like the tailpipe be here, but kinda, kind of coming out at this 
kind of coming out at this angle like that towards the ground for both sides make them as even as possible um it'll be nice and loud but i pretty much told myself that this thing is not going to be it's not going to be able to be driven to work every day for a week straight let's just say that it's going to be like a sunday cruiser take it out hammer on it where no one knows where you are and put it away take it to the strip a little bit race it a little bit so um i pretty much said that's what i'm gonna do with it but uh we got a little bit of a work some work ahead of us to get this uh cam out so i might start on it tonight but it's not gonna be in this video it will be in a separate video so if i do start on it i'll make a separate start making a separate video but um other than that yeah that's pretty much the plan with the the c10 oh and i might put cal tracks on it eventually that is the goal is to get some some kind of traction bars on it sooner than later um yeah you can see the exhaust is definitely not in the best shape you know so yeah the old turbo 350 is coming out and uh, we'll get that th 400 in there she's a leaky one too i can see oh man she was real leaky it's gonna it's gonna rock and roll now it's definitely gonna be a tire fryer with that kind of stall but that kind of cam it's gonna sound nasty so that's a little update on the c10 after i got the c20 test drove so you guys will have to stay tuned there is plenty more to come don't worry there's lots to come like comment subscribe share hit the post notification bell so you can see every time i post and thank you guys for a thousand subscribers i'm so happy we hit a thousand subscribers now let's make it big thanks for watching thanks for subscribing we'll see you in the next one.